Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Fee and this is Money Philosophy. Today we have a lot to talk about. I will first share with you uh, the total amount of shares that I own in Tesla as an investor. I know that I've been talking about uh, my perspective as both a trader and an investor, but I have not shared with you guys um, the amount of stock that I own in this company. So I'll do that today. Um, I will also share with you my leap call option that I purchased for expiration date of March. March 2023. Um, we will revisit that to see where I stand and what's the outlook. Of course, we will go through Tesla technical analysis. Um, and I want to run through some of the usual stocks such as um, Amazon and Shopify. And last but not least, if we do have time, I want to go over uh, some of the stocks that I think have a potential for a bullish run in the next few weeks. So stay tuned until the end of the video. We have an agenda packed today and I hope you enjoy the video. If you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. I am a growth stock investor and a trader, and I'd love to share with you guys my investing and trading journeys. Let's get right into it. So here's the total number of shares of Tesla that I own. Um, they spread across different accounts, so the interface might look a little bit interesting, but the total number of shares that I calculated here is 454 shares. Total amount of market value as of Friday, June the 25th um, at $671 a share is approximately $304,000. My cost basis is lower. Uh, it's hard to share the total cost basis, but I own shares in Tesla since it was $75 a share all the way to about $660 a share. Some of the shares I bought when it was around $800 a share. Um, so it's a blended average, um, but I do not plan on selling any of my Tesla shares anytime soon. These are my long-term investment, at least for another three to five years. Next, let's take a look at my call option in Tesla. This is a call option with a strike price of $1,000 expiring March 2023, which is about uh, almost two years from now. Um, I bought it at $9,000 and um, as of right now or as of Friday, June the 25th, the market value of that option is $12,350. Um, netting me about $3,300 in gain. At peak, it was almost $3,900 in gain, but I'm not interested in a few hundred here and there. I do wanna hold on to this call option a little bit longer, and then I'm gonna have to reevaluate my strategy. For example, if, if Tesla is running up leading into July 2nd and it gets somewhere in the 750 to 800 range I might take it off only because Tesla tend to sell off right after um, Q2 delivery result announcement so this is my uh, call option where I would time the market I probably won't time it perfectly but this is one of those situations that allows me as a trader to time the market and profit short-term gains. Um, whereas my Tesla portfolio is something that I hold on to it and I don't care if Tesla shares go to 400 tomorrow, I will still hold on to those shares and I possibly could buy more. Um, so those are just two different strategies that I wanted to share. Let's get back to chart analysis. Um, we are looking at Tesla daily chart. Um, Tesla ended Friday at $671.87 with a volume of 120%. The volume is still pretty impressive for the last three days. And I think that Tesla does have an opportunity to move upward in the next week or so. However, the daily candle on Friday was not very promising. Uh, Tesla opened the day gapped up, which was a significant gap up. Uh, it opened at $691 and then it filled the gap and some more. Um, so as we stand right now, the gap up from Wednesday to Thursday was not filled. Um, so that's good news. Um, however, this particular candle on Friday um, is not very encouraging. What I'm looking for right now is whether Tesla can hold on to this particular breakout. As you can see that um, it has been consolidating and then it pulled an ascending triangle, as I mentioned in a few videos ago, um, and then it start breaking out. Right now, it stays above 50 days SMA, which is $640. Uh, it is below my uh, next price target, which is $704. If Tesla consolidate here for another day or 
two, I do think it has the potential to move up. Uh, for Monday, let's take a look at the 30 minute chart to see what the range of trading looks like. Um, we would range between $704 on the upper end, which is right at my price target for now. Um, and the midpoint for the pivot is 678 and the bottom uh, point for the pivot is $662. On the hourly, it looks like Tesla um, had a double top at around $690. Uh, after consolidating for a while, Tesla broke out, made a top at around $690, $695, um, and then could not go above that. Um, so this is tricky, right? For the bears, um, this would be happy territory for them. They'd like to see it go back down to 640, at least on an hourly chart. Uh, for the bulls, we are trying to uh, look at this and say, well, the uh, move down has not been significant compared to the breakout. So Tesla is still making a higher low for all intents and purposes. And both analyses are technically correct. Um, however, I lean bullish because like I said, Tesla delivery result for Q2 is going to be announced uh, sometime this week or over the weekend. And I do think that it is a catalyst for traders and Wall Street to be hopeful enough to start pouring money into Tesla. On the other hand, um, I can see that uh, on Friday, if Tesla does announce the result on Friday, it could be one of those situations to sell the news. Um, so if I were to let my imagination run a little bit with no particular basis, uh, Tesla could go up all the way to about 768 before Friday if everybody is expecting tesla to beat estimates uh, then tesla could go up there and then start retracing to about 650 dollars level right after that however as a good trader you don't make a play based on anticipated results without an imminent trigger so why what do i mean by that if you see an imminent trigger that is where you're going to enter that's where you could make the most out of your option because time is of the essence when it comes to options so what i mean by an, an immediate trigger um, for example on wednesday you see tesla had this breakout after consolidating right around 200 days SMA. We know that Tesla is bound to break out at any point in time, but you could have entered call option anywhere along this line and hold on to your call option and sometimes it could expire worthless. But once you see this breakout candle, that is the signal for an imminent run and that's where I would enter my call and I did uh, and I share with you that trade uh, in my last video I'll put the link down below uh, so those are sort of my analysis before I enter a trade and how I hold on to a trade and manage it um, so I hope that's helpful um, let's move on to the next stock on my list here so the next stock on my list is Shopify Shopify has been running up pretty violently for the last two weeks. And now let's take a look and see what trading opportunities there are. Uh, first and foremost, I think Shopify um, is a highly volatile stock, which is really good for trading because premium could be moving really fast uh, if you are in the right direction. Uh, of course, T Shopify is not for the faint of heart because if you do not get the right direction, premium could deflate pretty terribly. Um, and as a result, you'd lose a lot of money. So uh, trading Shopify requires skill as well as observation. Um, for me, what I see is that Shopify hit a previous resistance of about 1550 and then move back down. Um, so on average, that resistance is about 1500 to 1550 that is the selling zone for Shopify um, Shopify also had a daily bull flag a few weeks ago which broke out again so this bull flag here or this run up here is as a result of this bull flag here um, and so right now I'm not waiting for Shopify to move up further it could but that would not be the play that I'm waiting for what I'm waiting for is for Shopify to confirm that it reject the $1,500 level here and move back down. Um, on the way down, Shopify um, has $1,373 as 
a support and the next support is 13 16 um, so those would be the point that I would very much like to see Shopify fall down to um, so I do lean bearish on Shopify however Shopify is not a kind of stock that I can just guess that and enter right away I have to wait for the right signal um, for example if Shopify gaps up on Monday um, I probably would play a put at least for the gap and then wait for Shopify to hopefully go back down to um, about 1373. Um, so those are uh, my thoughts on Shopify. Uh, we can also take a look at the 30 minute chart on Shopify here. Uh, once again, Shopify has been consolidating around $1,500, which was the previous resistance. Um, it does seem to have a uh, upper pivot point of about uh, 1500 for Monday and the bottom pivot point at 1402. Um, so I do lean bearish on Shopify for next week, but that doesn't mean that it will materialize. I would just have to take a look and pay attention to it. Palantir is the next stock on my list. This one is not a day trading stock for me, but I do think that it has a potential bullish run um, to about $30.66 and then potentially uh, to about $37.98. Right now, it does look like an inverse head and shoulder here, and it is well above 50 days SMA, which is $22.76. I do have a position in Palantir for long-term holding, but as a trader, I think this is a good opportunity for a short-term um, call options for Palantir. Uh, about three to four weeks out, I do expect Palantir to get to about $37 or $38. Um, so a call option of $30 strike price sounds um, like a decent call. Sounds like a decent play right now. Next on my list is Fubo TV. Fubo has a gap um, to be filled, um, and to fill that gap, it needs to get to $41.85. Right now, the stock is at $34.25. Um, the volume on Friday was 252%. Once again, that's very impressive volume. I do expect Fubo to fill this gap at $41.85 and then some. Um, the next price target would be $43.73, $46.84, $50.81, and $54.20. Um, so those are my price target for Fubo. Um, I do foresee myself entering a few call options for Fubo. Once again, a few weeks out, I'm not going to do weekly option because we don't know when exactly it's going to break out. It looks like it will, but the exact timeline is unclear. Um, so I probably do um, a call option for maybe July 30th or something like that um, with a strike price of about $40 to um, to make sure that by the time it fills the gap, I would be already in the money. Um, so that's my play for Fubo. Um, it is a swing option play, so I will not go over hourly chart because it probably take a little bit for the stock to materialize. Um, so I need some time on that, therefore a swing trade. Next on my list here is Tilray. Tilray so far has not fired off any signal for a bullish run, but it is very possible that it would shortly. If Tilray goes back up to about $21, $22, right now it's at $18, um, then I would very much like to enter a call at that point. And if Tilray goes up to about $29 to $30, I do believe that it's going to swing all the way back up to about $60. Um, so those are my play. Uh, potentially one call option at $22 and another one at $30 if it does um, get up there. Uh, because the price is so cheap, um, I probably pick up a few call options, but I do need time on this one. Um, so I don't know when exactly. So I need about three to five weeks at least. Uh, but if you are not yet certain about the trade, um, then don't enter it until it gets to that um, zone when you're ready to enter, which is $21, $22. That's where my first entry point would be. Sure, premium would be more expensive then, but I don't know if it will get to $21, $22, or it's going to consolidate sideways um, around 50 days moving average, which is at $17, $20 right now. 
Um, so sometimes you do have to buy the option at a more expensive premium price in exchange for a little bit more certainty or probability, if you will. Um, so that's what I'm going to do with Tilray. But Tilray is slated to run as well, in my opinion. We just don't know when, so we're going to keep a good eye out for it. Last but not least here is Amazon. Congratulations if you've made this far in this video um, and I will share with you one of my favorite stocks here to trade, that's Amazon. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, Amazon is my second biggest holding as an investor. Um, so I am unfortunately also bullish biased. Um, that said, I've been on both sides of Amazon trades and I uh, rely on technical analysis for trading. So I hope that this is helpful to you guys. I know there's a lot of lines here um, and I'm going to break them down for you, but I want you to see a weekly bull flag in the making here that I've been saying it over and over again for the last few videos is that the first price target of this weekly bull flag is 39.50. Right now, Amazon is at $3,400, so $3,950, that's $550 more than where it's at today. And the second price target is $4,551, which is over a thousand more than where it's at today. Now, I'm not suggesting that Amazon will get there tomorrow or even next month. It needs time and catalyst. However, um, I want to point that out so that we know that in the long term picture, Amazon is bullish. Now, I'm going to go back to the daily chart and I want to share with you my four hour bull flag, which is the green lines over here. Um, so on my four hour bull flag, Amazon does have a bull flag with a first price target of 50, no, 35.93 and the second price target of 36.84. Um, right now, Amazon for the last two days have touched the lower end of the bull flag at 3400. Uh, if Amazon falls below 3400 uh, on Monday and hold below there, my bull flag would be canceled. Uh, just the four hour bull flag, not the weekly bull flag. The weekly bull flag, Amazon has to fall below 2800 for it to be canceled. So uh, that's a much longer term uh, trend. But for now, with the four hour bull flag here, you can see that Amazon has potential to get to um, where it was before the all time high of 35.43 and then above that to 35.93 and 36.84. So those are Amazon potential play. Right now, do I see any particular trigger to buy a call option? Not necessarily. Amazon Premium is very expensive and I don't anticipate buying just because I want to weigh it out. If I want to weigh it out, I would buy shares, which I have plenty of. Um, so for me to buy any call option in Amazon, it has to go back up to above 3,500 and fire off um, to 35.50 in order for me to feel confident and buy a call option. I would then swing that call option into about 35.93 or 3,600. Um, so a strike price of about 35.90 would be optimal when Amazon get back up to 3,500, if that makes any sense. Um, it's still a little bit farther away. I'm not going to focus on just buying call option for Amazon, but these are the longer term picture that I want you guys to keep in mind. Once Amazon run, I believe it will be very much violent and you will see 39.50 in no time. We don't know when that is. We don't know when that is. It could be next year. It could be end of this year or it could be next week. Um, just be patient and continue to observe Amazon and wait for the right opportunity um, and you will make money that way. So this is it for this video. I hope you find the information helpful. I hope you will come back for more technical analysis. And until the next video, bye.